Wahlberg here, the CEO and co-founder of Prophetic. Today, I am extremely excited to show you what is the world's first ultrasonic transformer. Now, we call this model Morpheus One. For those of you who do not know, Morpheus was the Greek god of dreams, but even more specifically, the god of sending shapes into dreams. And given that our goal is to induce and stabilize lucid dreams with acoustic shapes, we thought it was only fitting. Now, this is a 100 million parameter model. Uh, to give you a sense of comparison, GPT-1 was similarly a 100 million parameter model. Um, this was trained on eight GPUs over the course of a number of days. Um, today, we're gonna show you, I'm gonna explain to you how we created this, what are the inputs, how it works. We're gonna do a showcase and a, and a live demo. And then I'm gonna tell you where we're going. Now, to start, let's talk about the previous paradigm of how neuroscience used to use TFUS. Now, for those of you who are, are not familiar, TFUS stands for transcranial focus ultrasound. It is our neurostimulation modality. It is the integrated circuit for non-invasive neuro, neurostimulation. Uh, Compare it to electrical stimulation, uh, or, or electromagnetic stimulation, which is very limited in its ability to get depth into the brain, has virtually no precision and no ability to be steered. TFUS can get centimeters into the brain non-invasively. Its precision is millimeters, and it has an ability to be steered in a three-dimensional way. Now, even with that extraordinary capacity, neuroscience has been very limited by what we call the statistical mechanics paradigm. So neural data is very complex. When you're talking about fMRI, it's very complex from a spatial perspective. When you're talking about EEG, it's very complex from a temporal perspective. And machine learning architectures were not really fit for purpose. But then about two years ago, a team developed something called a neural transformer, which is what we use as one of the key inputs to this ultrasonic transformer. Now, one of the key things that you'll see in this diagram is what was done previously which is neuroscientists use statistical mechanics to find the area of the brain that was most statistically significant in a given brain state. You know, on the left, you're seeing in a whole host of activity, but on the right where you see the focus verification, they're only targeting the most statistically significant part of the brain for that given conscious state. Now, this is equivalent to playing a, just a trombone on one note and blasting that one part of of the brain and hoping that you can induce that brain state. But our goal here is creating a transformer that can steer not a single element transducer, but multi-element transducers, which can create not one instrument playing one note, but an entire orchestra of neural activity so that we can actually target the entire ensemble of neural activity of a given brain state, as opposed to just the statistically significant now, I mentioned 3D searing capacities of trans uh, transcranial focus ultrasound. And actually, it's, it's incredible because not only can you pulse in three dimensions, which is, of course, important uh, because your brain fires in three-dimensional neural firing patterns, but you can even take this one step further, which is you can create acoustic holography. What you're seeing here on the right is an acoustic hologram of the prophetic logo. It just gives you the sense of the power of this neuromodulation technology which has so been, been so frustratingly held back by a lack of ability to automatically in an automated fashion steer these transducers to create this holography. But we've broken that wide open. Now, in order to build this model, we use a very unique neuroimaging uh, technique. It's called simultaneous EEG and fMRI. This is very unique because it requires non-ferromagnetic EEG, um, uh, EEG sensors, uh, because if you use ferromagnetics in an fMRI, uh, it, it doesn't go very well. But what it allows us to do is capture a simultaneous data set that has, tempor uh, has temporal correspondence, which is very critical for building a multimodal transformer. Now, on the, on, the, on the left, you see a topological PSD plot of EEG data. So this is, uh, you know, could be theta waves, or for us, what most is, is most important is gamma frequencies, which is uh, this heightened sense of, of EEG activity that, that happens during lucid dreaming, which serves as the token for our model. And then here on the right, you're seeing post-processed fMRI data from our fMRI data pipeline, um, 
which uh, which basically gets it clear enough to, uh, and creates uh, enough kind of statistical uh, significance so we can take that data and run it through our model to train it. So you're seeing also the inside of the brain and how we we cluster those components together. This is the generative ultrasonic transformer architecture. Now, the important thing you'll see here is an encoder block, which is uh, only trained on EEG data, and then the decoder block, which is trained on the fMRI data. So EEG, fMRI. What this model outputs is spatial targets for the neurostimulation. So we take naturally occurring let's say lucid dreaming data in and train the model so that it outputs the neurostimulation uh, targets so that we could replicate the neural firing pattern, thus inducing the brain state. Now, I don't wanna just show you a diagram. I wanna show you what we've built. I wanna show you Morpheus One. So here we're in a terminal. On the left, you're gonna see the EEG, which would be coming from the halo headband on your forehead. Um, and then on the right, you're seeing in simulation software, the outputs of the pulses uh, in the prefrontal cortex. Now I'm gonna click enter here. What you're gonna see is that image on the left evolve to the next token uh, from the EEG and the model outputting what is targets, voxels, which are gonna be the targets for the TFUS. And so in a moment, we're gonna see the right image change and you're seeing an evolution of the next sequence of, of targets to be able to not either induce uh, the lucid dream or maintain uh, the lucid dream. So let's give it another, another input. So again, you're gonna see the left change on the EEG coming in again from the, from the, the headband. We're outputting voxels. Again, we're looking for that EEG spike in gamma frequencies, which is associated with lucid dreaming. and we're outputting the next sequence of spatial instructions. Let's do it one more time. What's incredible about this is, you know, it, it will be autonomously happening while you, while, you, while you wear the headband. And so it's just gonna give you this automated experience where you put the headband on, you go to sleep. The first prompt of the model is Eric's entered REM, and then we output the next space, uh, sequence of spatial instructions. One more time, just because I like watching it run. Next token from EEG. And remember the prefrontal cortex, the neural correlates of lucid dreaming is REM with the prefrontal cortex activated, which is why we're focused in that prefrontal cortex region of the brain. Boom, there you go. All right. Where are we going? One thing that I wanna, communicate to you all is we're not really just a lucid dreaming company. We're a conscious experiences company. Morpheus One and its successors are not just going to give us the ability to train a model on lucid dreaming, but we could train the model on focus, positive mood, deep meditation, and, and anything else. What we're looking at here is a foundational technology that paired with TFUS gives us the ability to explore the state space of human consciousness. Now, we're getting tantalizingly close to making this a reality. In March, we will have the fully working technical prototype running this model. And if you're interested, whether you're here in the New York City area or anywhere in the world, we're gonna attach a type form to this thread and you can sign up to be an early beta user. Now, what's exciting about this is if you're early on that list, it is very possible that you will be the first person to have the first ultrasonically induced lucid dream. Uh, you're not the first person to step foot on the moon, but you are the first, potentially the first person to step uh, foot in a, in, in a dream world, in the dream world that we all go to every night, but this time uh, we're there to stay and to unlock that dream world in a lucid fashion which gives you the ability to create conscious experiences of your own at will. Now, I just wanna take a moment to thank my co-founder Wes, uh, who really is the brains behind this. Uh, we, we maybe had the same vision, but he has been working tirelessly to achieve it. And I also wanna thank the rest of the team who's worked tirelessly to achieve this. 
Now, Morpheus 1 is 100 million parameters, but we, uh, we're already collecting more neuroimaging data. And we will continue to launch Morpheus 2, 3, 4, etc. And we'll expect a, a, a quite a swelling both of parameter count and increases uh, in accuracy. So we're just getting started. Um, we hope that you'll uh, join us as a beta user. Um, we hope you enjoyed what is uh, the demo of the world's first ultrasonic transformer, Morpheus 1. We'll talk to you soon.